Welcome to Daily Office Devotions, where every Monday through Friday, we ask how God might direct our lives from that day's scripture readings as given in the Book of Common Prayer. I'm Reggie Kidd, and I'm grateful to be with you. This Wednesday in the season after Pentecost, our readings come from Proper 29 of Year 1 in the Daily Office Lectionary. No discards. Bob died not long ago. He was 92 years old, and he had been retired for many years from a long and productive calling as a pastor. Even though he led Bible studies up to the very end of his life, in his last few years he often wondered aloud to his daughter Donna if there was any more purpose to his life, or whether he was a discard. She kept reminding him that he was precious to God, to her, and to the many people whom he had served and continued to serve in ministry. A couple of weeks before his death, Bob got a new roommate, Manny. Manny noticed that Bob read the Bible a lot, and he asked Bob about it. Bob shared his faith in Christ, and to Bob's surprise, Manny asked if he could pray to receive Christ. Two days later, Manny died. Donna told Bob, See, Dad, God has no discards. You are here for Manny, and now Manny will be part of the reception party for you when the time comes. The time for that reception party came a mere two weeks later. Donna, of course, shed and still does many tears. But there's no small joy mixed with the tears, knowing her dad knew his gracious God had given him that one last mission. The anchor of Bob's soul was Jesus Christ, who himself knew what it was to be a discard. As Peter says, echoing Isaiah, Jesus was rejected by men, but chosen and precious in God's sight. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 in the NET, and see Isaiah chapter 28, verse 6. Any of us who feel like life has passed us by or that people have turned their back on us can look to Jesus. That's the way they treated him. And if we belong to him, we can count our dismissal as a sharing in his suffering of rejection. Whether it's an employer who has said, we're going in a different direction. A spouse who says, I don't love you anymore. A child who says, I hate you and want you out of my life. Or a friend who says, because your politics are so distasteful to me, we can't be friends any longer. Jesus knew rejection. He also knew that to his Father in heaven, he was specially chosen, deeply known, and deeply loved. In fact, before the foundation of the world. He knew that he was precious. The Greek at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 is entimos, which means highly valued. He also knew that as a living stone, he was the anchoring stone, and scholars puzzle over whether the term he uses makes him the foundation stone or capstone of an amazing new house his father was building, a house in which God and we would reside together. Regardless of how others treated him, Jesus knew his mission was to anchor a building made up of other living stones, you and me and Bob and Donna and Manny. Peter writes to people who are now outsiders to Roman life. Many of these, because of their new life in Christ, became castoffs in their homes, associated no longer in shady business deals and no longer patronized brothels with their friends. Peter wants them to know they are treasured by their heavenly father, ransomed by their brother and friend, and essential to the house of which they themselves are a part. Peter augments the picture of their being living stones in God's new building. He draws upon several vivid Old Testament images of the way God values and dignifies his people. A holy and royal priesthood, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 5 and 9. While the world does not even know why it aches and feels cursed, Christ's people stand between them and the God who loves them. There, Christ's people cry out, How long, O Lord, until you end the aches and remove the curse? A chosen race, 
1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. While the world descends further and further into an ugly and destructive tribalism, Christ's people resolutely invite anybody and everybody to become part of a new peoplehood being built around the second Adam, the last man. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 45 and 47. A holy nation, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. In a field of competing loyalties, Christ's people point to one leader, one king, one commonwealth that is worthy of ultimate loyalty, the kingdom of God in Christ. A people for his possession, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. While the world grasps after and competes for more and more possessions, all the while becoming more and more possessed by those possessions, Christ's people rejoice in the stunning wonder of counting themselves held, protected, and cherished by the God who has claimed them as his prized possession. No longer not a people, nor those who have not received mercy, but now transformed into God's people and those who have received mercy. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 10. In a world of people who secretly fear the worst about themselves, that they are and fully deserve to be discards, Christ's people unrelentingly proclaim the excellencies of the God who claims precisely such people, forgives them, heals them, and beautifies them. I'm grateful Bob knew the full measure of these precious truths. I pray that you and I know them too. Be blessed this day.